What is up party people? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Devin and I'm a self-proclaimed pen nerd and paper freak. If you could at all relate to that, you might want to consider subscribing because I do a lot of videos just like this one. So for today's video, I'm going to share with you my January favorites, which I tend to do a mixture of pen, paper, and then also some personal things. If you're just here for the stationery, don't you worry, I'll go ahead and start with those things. The first two things I'm going to share as a pair, and I did do a whole video on this which I'll link in the description box below if you'd like to check it out but I have definitely been enjoying my planning system for 2019. And I know it's only been a month, so it might be too early to say, but as far as I can tell, this planning system is working out great for me. So just to give you a quick rundown, I've decided to use two planners this year. One is the Midori Day Length Diary. My main use for this is to just schedule things. And because of the 24 hour layout, it's been working out great for things like that. So I can just plop everything down in here and see at a glance what I've got going on on any particular day. And the paper in here, I just cannot stress enough, is so wonderful to write on, especially if you're using fountain pens. I just, I'm enjoying it so much. The other planner is the Wordsworth planner, and it's my first year using either of these, but this one in particular I've been using to plan out my YouTube videos. So anything that is related to creating content, I've been using this planner for and it's working out fantastic. It's an undated planner and just the setup of it is very straightforward. It's been great for someone like me who likes a little bit of structure but also wants the flexibility to decorate with washi tape and things like that. The Wordsworth planner allows me to work a little bit more creatively so in a sense it's kind of like a workbook or a goal book and that's why I ended up with two planners this year. I feel like each serve a different purpose. Both of these planners just feel so good to hold and I know that seems just a, a little bit minute in terms of the functionality but I think the tactile element is super important because if it feels good in your hands then you'll want to use it more maybe that's just me but if you'd like to hear me gush even more about each of these planners you should check out the video that I'll leave in the description box and I'll be sure to leave links for all the things that I talk about today as well another thing that I've been really enjoying this past month is the tool disk bound notebook system and this one in particular is from their limited edition brilliance collection i'm not sure if you can get your hands on it anymore but they do have a variety of colors in their standard line this is the junior size i believe so just for comparison i believe the wordsworth planner is an a5 size and the midori day length diary is b5 it was very tempting for me to include this in my 2019 planner setup, but I decided not to because it really isn't a planner. It's just where I'm housing all of my notes for right now. And I don't have that much going on in here, but I'll go ahead and flip through it so you can get an idea. One of my goals for this year is to KonMari, and with that, I've decided to post more frequently on Poshmark. My goal is to post a new listing every day, which from this list you could probably see that I didn't quite do that, but there are a couple days where I've posted multiple things. So all in all, I'm posting more frequently and I feel good about that. This has been an excellent way for me to keep track of the things that I'm selling and eventually if it's hit a certain time frame, I'm just going to donate it if it hasn't sold. So. That's how I've set that up, and I'm really just liking having it in my discbound notebook. I don't think that I would have enjoyed making it as much if I decided to put it in my Midori Day Length Diary. And that's all that's happening in this notebook. I know it's not very much at all, but I just felt so compelled to share it in this video because I'm enjoying it that much. My last two stationary items are something that I talked about in my last video. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it off in the description box below. But I am so very much enjoying fountain pens, just in general. I have been reaching for them over my regular gel pens and 
ball points and whatnot. And these are two of the three fountain pens that I had currently inked. And I say had because I just used up all the ink in this one. It was inked up with Colorverse Andromeda and that's a wonderful ink. I highly recommend it. And before that, I had it inked up with Lamy Vibrant Pink. So in my favorites notes, it's actually that pairing that I wanted to share with you. But then I tried Colorverse Andromeda and I liked that one too. So either way, they're both great pinks. The vibrant pink is very vibrant and it's got some glitter in it, which is nice if you like that sort of thing. And then the Colorverse Andromeda is a very deep magenta that has some sheening properties. So you should definitely check out those if you haven't already. And I don't want to rattle on more than I have to about this pen, but it's from Daiso. It's $1.50 and it's great. It comes in two different colors, white and silver. It has a medium nib and as far as I know, that's the only nib size option. So there's that to keep in mind. It does come with a blue ink cartridge, which I used up and I'm not a huge fan of, but they do sell the refills if you end up liking it. The next time you're at your local Daiso, you should check this out. Keep in mind it's $1.50, so set your expectations accordingly, but it's still a pen that I reach for even though I've expanded my collection to other things like the Twisby Eco, and this is in the color white. This was around $30 give or take. I can't remember off the top of my head because it was a Christmas gift from my parents. So mom and dad, if you happen to be watching this video, thank you so much again. I really do love it. And right now I have it inked up with Robert Oster Sydney Lavender. I also recommend that ink. It's a very subdued muted purple and it's it's just lovely. I really am enjoying it so far. So in comparison to the Daiso pen, this takes ink cartridges and this one is a piston filling mechanism. So this part right here at the end actually twists so that you can draw ink up out of the bottle or sample vial. It's an extra fine fountain pen and a very smooth writer at that. So for all those reasons and much more, this definitely deserved a spot in my January favorites. For my last two favorites, they're not stationary related, but I've been enjoying them so much that I wanted to share it with you. I've recently started watching for the millionth time, and that might not even be an exaggeration at this point. Gilmore Girls has been my mainstay. I love it. I love Rory. I love Lorelai. I love their story, and just every time I watch it, there's something new about the dialogue or certain nuances that just really makes me chuckle and if I'm ever in a bad mood I just put Gilmore Girls on and when I'm in a good mood I put Gilmore Girls on. I just realized my mic isn't on. I'm gonna turn that back on. I apologize for that. That's really uh, unfortunate. <laughs> okay so my mic should be back on and I apologize for that uh, slip on my part and now there's an airplane helicopter thing. Wow, this video was falling apart really fast, but getting back on track, I love Gilmore Girls. I have loved Gilmore Girls. It's one of the shows that I look forward to watching with my daughter if I ever have one. Maybe I'll, you know, get my son to watch it with me too. I don't know, but when my husband and I have kids and they're old enough, I love the idea of sitting down with them and watching Gilmore Girls. They, they might not want to. <laughs> That's going off on a tangent. The last thing that I want to share with you in terms of my January favorites is I have recently got bit by the Shawn Mendes love bug. I know he's like not, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Shawn Mendes. I'm obviously sharing my appreciation for him in this video. It's just not someone that I thought I would like this much. I don't know when he came out with this album, but I'll have it linked off in the description box below so you can take a listen. I am like enamored with some of these songs. I really like Where Were You in the Morning. I also like Lost in Japan, which is probably the one that's being like 
overplayed on the radio right now, but it's it's really good. It's got a Justin Timberlake feel, and who doesn't like Justin Timberlake? I also like Youth with uh, Khalid. Yeah, if you have been like me and you've been sleeping on Shawn Mendes, it's time to wake up and, you know, smell the roses, which is kind of random but also very relevant because his album artwork has he's covered in like roses i can definitely see that we're heading down tangent lane right now and my stomach is growling like it's a monster it's its own person right now so i will wrap up this video here thank you so much for watching and Please let me know in the comments below what your favorite things were in January. I think it's great to take time to appreciate the things that brought us joy. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I do my best to upload every Tuesday and Thursday evenings. If you want some more pen and paper goodness, make sure to check out the description box below. I'll leave some videos linked that I think you might enjoy. Thank you again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.